Hi, today we are going to talk about another very important question. So this question is important not only from the perspective of interview but also from the perspective of developing problem solving skill or from the perspective of thinking. So we will not only solve this problem, we will just go through the thought process. We will think through the solution. We will see that, okay, if I haven't solved this problem before, how will I approach this particular problem and come up with a solution? And if the solution is not the most optimized one, how I am going to optimize that solution? In that process, we will come across an algorithm and we'll see that algorithm as well. So let's just get started. So first, I'll make you understand the question. Once I tell you what is the question, make sure you try it on your own. No matter whichever approach you come across with, you come across brute force and anything, try to solve this problem. And once you have solved this problem, come back to see what is it that we are discussing further. Okay, so let me first tell you the question. So the question is, given an array, find the majority element if it exists. So we have to find the majority element in an array. If I have to explain you what is majority element. So any element which is occurring more than n by 2 times is the majority elements. Majority element. So in this case, n is the number of elements in the array. So if you see here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 elements. And which so ever element which is having frequency greater than 4 be it be 5, 6 or 7 is the majority element. So we will see that do I have any such element. So if you can see that 2 occurs just twice. So the frequency of 2 is 2. The frequency of 3 is 1. And frequency of 7 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5. So I can say that 7 is the majority element. So that is the problem statement. Just try and solve this on your own first. Pause the video try and solve and then come back to this particular problem. So I hope you tried the solution. So let's just see that if I have to solve this particular problem, you know, I don't know any existing algo or anything like that. So what I'll do is I'll pick up any element and go through the complete array to check that what is the number of times this element is occurring. So I'll get the count of the element or count of the number of times the element is occurring in the array. And I'll just check that whichsoever element is having count greater than 2, that is going to be our majority element. And one thing you need to understand here is that there will be only one majority element if it exists. There could be a possibility that there is not even a single majority element, which is fine. In that case, we'll just print that there is no majority element. But if there is a majority element, there will be always be just one majority element. Because obviously, if let's say the size is 8 and there is one element which is occurring at least 5 times, then any other element will occur at most three times, right? So there could be just one majority element, right? So as I said, the brute force approach could be, I take any particular element, I count its frequency, I take next element, I count its frequency in the array. And what I'll do is, I'll just see that whichsoever count is greater than n by two, that is going to be my majority element. So if I see, you know, this is a brute force approach that I'm coming across with. I have an approach. I can't say that I am not able to solve the problem. I am able to solve this problem. But if you are not able to come up with this brute force approach as well, I'll just suggest you that you do more of logic building practice. You solve more and more problems. Okay. Because here, this is something that I can crack only with the logic building capacity that I have. Okay. So in this case, if we see what is the time complexity, so we'll have to have two loops. So if we see what is the time complexity for this, so in this we'll have one loop for going across each and every element and picking up the element, right? And then we'll have a nested loop for calculating that what is going to be my frequency of that particular element. So let's say I choose seven. So from here, I'll go through across each and every element to check what is the frequency. Similar things we'll do for two, seven, three and things like that, okay? So this will make, since we have a nested loop, this will make our time complexity to O of n square. Okay, so now let's say what I have to do is, let's say you are in an interview or something and someone tells you that, okay, this is fine, but you need to optimize this code. What is the other option I have? So, you know, whenever you are using an array and you have something like O of n square or something, or whenever you are using an array, just see one thing that if I sort this array, will that help me in any manner? I'm repeating, if I sort this array, will that help me in any manner? So I've just given a hint. Again, take this hint, sort this array, see if you're able to see any pattern that will give you an answer. Okay. So now let's say I sort this array. So after sorting the array, the array looks something like this. So we have 
टू टू थ्री सेवन 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 एंड सेवन ओके सो नाउ वन थिंग इज दैट इफ आई एम सेइंग द मेजोरिटी एलिमेंट विल हैव द काउंट ग्रेटर देन एन बाय टू विच मींस दैट द मिड एलिमेंट शुड बी द मेजोरिटी एलिमेंट so let's say in this case my mid element is going to be this particular element okay so let's say this is my mid element so now what i have to do is that i just have to check that whether this is a majority element or not so in order to check this what do i have to do i just have to count the frequency of this particular element so if the frequency of this particular element is greater than n by 2 that gives me the majority element if the frequency is not greater than 2 that means that the element is not the majority element so let's take few examples to understand this process better so now let's just write down the algorithm that we saw just now okay so what is it what are the steps that we did number 1 we sorted the array so you are supposed to sort the array then you have to find the mid element and then you just have to check or you just have to count the frequency of mid element by whenever i am saying frequency by that i mean that the number of times the element is occurring okay and then i just have to find the frequency of mid element if frequency is greater than n by 2 then obviously it's a majority element else we will simply return that there is no majority element so let's just see few test cases to understand that whether this particular approach that we are following works fine for all the test cases or not so we'll just check for some test cases before we proceed to even further optimized approach so if, if we see the time complexity of this the time complexity for sorting the array will be o of n log n and let's say for finding the frequency again we take o of n time okay so what happens is that for finding the frequency we can further optimize it to log n okay so now i'll just see let's just see some examples so in this case let's say example is 1 1 1 2 3 so in this case the mid element is 1 and we can see that the frequency of 1 is 3 so this is going to be my majority element now let's say another example is 1 2 2 2 3 in this case again this is the mid element the frequency is going to be 3 so yes this is my majority element so we are seeing that whichever is the mid element if it is a majority element if there is a majority element that exists then mid element will always be a majority element let's take a example when there is no majority element like 1 2 2 3 3 3 so in this case we have 1 2 3 4 5 5 by 2 is 2 we should have at least frequency as 3 for the majority element but we see that mid element is 2 but the frequency is 2 so there is no such majority element that exists so we'll simply return there is no such majority element so as you can see that the frequency is as you can see the time complexity is o of n log n okay so now let's say again if you write this code you get tle or for that matter you put this in an interview and the interviewer tells you that okay maybe you can optimize it further what are the op other options we have maybe we can try for o of n so let's see if we can solve this problem without sorting the array again for this we'll have to solve more test cases to understand a pattern so let's go ahead and see that okay so now let's try to again see some observe some pattern over here so here let's say we have 7 2 7 3 7 2 7 okay i hope i have written it correct yeah so in this case the count of 7 is 5 the count of 2 is 2 and the count of 3 is 1 so if you see if we subtract count of 7 from any non majority elements count from any non majority element count so let's say here the non majority element is 2 so 2 plus 1 again 3 is the non majority element so what i'm doing is we, one side we have count of majority element other side we have sum of all the counts of non majority element you can see that eventually you will get the count let's say this is let's say diff you will get the diff as non zero positive null element okay so what i'm doing is if i'm subtracting the count here from here i'm getting some non zero number which means that let's say if there is a majority element that exists and i am traversing the array so, and let's say i keep a count and every time i find a majority element 
I'll increment a count and every time I find a non-majority element, I just decrement the count. And at the end of the day, if there will be a majority element, this count will be greater than zero. If there is a majority element, okay. But now the problem here is that I am just traversing from here to here. I do not know that what is the majority element, right? If I would have known that, then I could have simply calculated the frequency, right? But here while I am doing this operation that whenever I am getting the majority element, I am incrementing the count and if it is a non-majority element, I am decrementing the count. But the problem as I said here is that I do not know which is the majority element. So now let us see how this particular thought process will give me the solution. So what I will do is here since I do not know that what is my majority element, I will assume 7 is the majority element since this is the first element, okay. And what I will do is I will just go ahead, I will let us say I keep major major as a element which always keeps track that which is the majority element and I will keep count of that majority element, okay. So what I will do is I will just initialize major, major with 7 and count let us say as 1 which means that the majority element I am assuming 7 is having count 1. Now next time what happens is that I come across 2. Is 2 equivalent to 7? No, that is not equivalent to 7 which means I have to reduce the majority count. So I see that majority count becomes 0. Now it becomes 0 which means that till now we had only 2 elements 7 and 2 and none of them is the and I know for sure is that till now if this is becoming 0 which means that 7 is not the majority element. So what I will do is I will update my majority to major to 2 that maybe 2 is the majority element maybe I am just being maybe okay. Now I go ahead again find 7 7 is not equivalent to 2 then again here what we do is the major to 2 will update the count to 1 again okay. Now I come here again my count becomes 0 then again I will do the same thing since the count is 0 major will become 7 the count will become 1 again here what will happen major will become 7 the count will become 1 first it will become 0 and then I will update it and then I again come here what will happen is that 3 is not equivalent to 7 so my major will become 7 my count again becomes 1 first it becomes 0 and then we initialize it and then we come here again 2 is not the thing 1 and then we come here again becomes 7 and then it becomes 1 and now when I come here what happens is that we have 7 equivalent to 7 so my majority remains 7 and the count becomes 2. So now here at the end we have major as 7 and the count is greater than 2. If the count is greater than 0 which means there is a majority element and there we have 7 as the majority element right. So I have just assumed that 7 is the majority element. I have to verify at once that whether 7 is the majority element or not. So what I will do is again I will iterate through the array that will take extra O of n time and then we will check that frequency of 7. If the frequency of 7 is greater than n by 2 that will give me the majority element. And if the frequency is not greater than 7 by 2, it will not give me the majority element, okay. So now you must be wondering that I have got the count greater than 0 and I have also got the element. Why do I need to go again and check that whether this element is the majority element or not? I will just give you a test case. So now let us say I have a test case like 1, 2, 3 and 4, okay. There is no majority element. Initially my major will be 1, my count will be 1. Then what happens is that we come here, 1 is not equivalent to 2, count becomes 0, then we initialize major to 2, count to again 1, then we come here again, major becomes 3, count becomes 1, we come here, major becomes 4, count becomes 1. So now what happens is that the count is greater than 1 and we are having 4 as the major, okay, 4 as the major. But is 4 the major element? No. So that is why to verify whether what, whatever is coming at the end is majority or not, we just go through the array, okay. So we have just explained you, pro, you the process. I will just write these things step by step so that you understand what is happening. So what I wanted to tell you till now is that, you know, whatever we have done just now is actually an algorithm which is known as Murray's voting algorithm. I will just write it down. So just now we saw Murray's voting algorithm. I will just tell you what is the algo. So what happens is that we first find the candidate. For finding the candidate, what we do is, let's say the code to find the candidate is, we initialize something called major as let's say index of first element 0 and let's say we initialize our count as 1, okay. Then I'll run a loop from i equal to 1 till n 
okay and i just check that if r of major is equivalent to r of i i simply increment my count else we decrement the count and at any point of time if count becomes zero we update our major to i and we make our count to one this is what we we have been doing we just check every time that if r of major is equivalent to r of i this is what we were doing and whenever we are coming across count equal to zero at any point we are coming across count equal to zero which means that till here there is no element which has been the majority element right it's just that the majority is cutting the majority is cancel non majority is cancelling the majority element so maybe this element is the majority element this is what we are thinking okay and now once we have found the candidate this is the cone to found the candidate we verify if the candidate is the majority element and for that we just take this particular major and we just go through this particular array to find the frequency if frequency is greater than n by 2 then that is my majority elements else we simply print that there is no majority element and the time complexity for this is o of n and as i said that this is the murray's voting algorithm it's a very famous algorithm so that's that's how we try to solve a problem when we come across a problem in a very for the very first time and again i'll just repeat that so next time whenever you try to solve the problem start with the brute force approach if you are not coming directly to the optimized approach, try and solve more and more test cases. Try to find the pattern. You'll be able to solve the problem. Okay. Bye-bye.